I'm pretty sure we have all been in the situation where we're scrolling through Morph Market. We are at the end of the day on Sunday at a local reptile show. We are maybe even at a national level show that we've traveled hours and hours to. And there's an animal that is a great deal. It is such a good deal, it's almost a steal. And we know that if we don't buy that animal, somebody else is gonna see the deal and they're gonna snatch it up. So ultimately what this comes down to is you are struggling with, is this a good decision for your business or is this an impulse buy and is this actually going to be feeding a reptile addiction? So my name's Steven with Leviathan Snakes and that's what I wanna talk about this week. Quick disclaimer, when I say reptile addiction, I don't mean like a clinical definition. If there is a clinical definition, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a psychiatrist, I don't know if there is one. When I say reptile addiction, what I mean is somebody who has an unhealthy relationship with buying reptiles. And an unhealthy relationship is a situation where you are buying so many animals that you are compromising the animal care because you're past your limits or you're going to be going past your limits soon if you don't stop. And those purchases are not done with really any major strategic focus. Instead, the primary reason why that purchase was made was for the dopamine kick that you get out of buying a new reptile. Because buying a new reptile can give you the sense that you are progressing to your goals, but the problem with it is, is with ball pythons, it's such a long waiting game that just simply buying one animal isn't going to be able to hold you over till you get your goals and you are going to feel the urge, you're gonna feel the itch to buy one again and again and again and again and if you don't get it in check you can spend all of your money you can put your family in really really hard financial positions and again you can have so many animals that you are overextended yourself and I say all of this not to like throw stones because honestly, I struggle with this. That's part of the reason why I wanted to make this video. I struggle with the idea of does the desire to buy a new reptile, is that something that's smart or is that just me trying to feed a reptile addiction? So the strategies that I try to use in order to make sure that I'm not just feeding a reptile addiction and I'm trying to make smart decisions for Leviathan Snakes with Courtney is one of the very first ones is understanding what our limits are. So for us, we know given our space limitations, we can handle like three big projects that we can go really deep based off of all of the holdbacks we wanna have from them. And those projects for us are Sunset Clown and the Asphalt Project. So whenever we are buying an animal, we try everything we can to make sure that they fit into at least one and oftentimes two or even three if we can get to that point of those projects. And when I say fit into two or three, that doesn't mean that we can only buy an animal if they have Het Sunset, Yellow Belly, and Het Clown. Instead, what I mean is that we could pair that one animal into our Sunset Project and make amazing sunsets set babies, we could pair that one animal into our freeway project, make amazing freeways, or have the potential to make animals for freeways. And again, into our clown project and make amazing het clowns that will really progress our clown project forward as well. So we don't want to buy something that is kind of isolated and on its own. And because of this, because we have to have like such specific criteria given the projects that we are working in, it's able to cut out a lot of the noise in the ball python hobby. When I say noise, there's nothing wrong with all of these other projects. In fact, there are a lot of amazing projects that I would love to do if we had the space for them. But because we don't have the space for them, if I really, really dove into those projects, it would just make me want them even more. If I started researching them on YouTube, if I started going down the rabbit hole, it would just make me want them more and more and more. And ultimately, because I know what our limitations are given space, it would hurt our business trying to branch out to beyond what we currently have. Tying into limitations is that you should have a breeding strategy. You should know what pairs are you planning on making this year, what pairs are you planning on making next year, and so on and so forth. And then from those pairs, if you hit the odds, what animals would you wanna hold back? And ultimately, what are your goals? What are the long-term things you're trying to do in your ball python breeding hobby? And once you understand what your breeding strategy is, not only do you know what projects you're in, you also know what animals are critical for you 
for you to succeed. So if you plan out that you're gonna be working for the Sunset Clown Project, and you're gonna pair a sunset to a clown, and you're gonna make a bunch of double het females. And then from the double het females, you could either hold back a double het male, or you could buy a double het male, or you could try to buy a visual that's het for either clown or sunset in this situation. Now, with all of those different options available, once you get those double het females, you could much, much easier go to Morph Market, go to a local show with the intention of buying a clown het sunset. And if you found one and it was a good price and it really, really worked for you, then that isn't so much about feeding a reptile addiction because that was a planned purchase that you have been, you put into your strategy and had hopefully had in there for months before the opportunity arose. Now, if you aren't planning on doing the Sunset Clown Project, maybe you're doing the Sunset Pied Project, and you go to a local show and you see somebody who has a clown het sunset, but you're not working the Sunset Clown Project, you're working the Sunset Pied Projects, and you have a bunch of double het sunset pieds, but it's an amazing deal for that clown het sunset, maybe you could buy them and maybe it would help you out in the future. Maybe it could take you into a new direction, but that wasn't really in your plan. And if you do this too often, I feel like that those kind of deviations are a sign that you are feeding that reptile addiction rather than making smart business choices. Because if you are making smart business choices, those choices should have been in your plan to begin with. In this situation, you know what your limits are, you've developed your plan. Once you develop your plan, I think it is a good idea to shortlist the animals that you would want to buy because you can't produce them, or if you can produce them, it's going to be years and years and years down the road, as well as put the price that you would be willing to pay for them next to them. So then you have this kind of like cheat sheet where if you're ever in a situation, you can reference it. So a clown hat sunset might pop up, but if you say that you're willing to spend $3,500 on a clown het sunset and one pops up for six grand, yeah, it might have a couple extra jeans, but it was outside the budget that you had planned for you. So even though it might be awesome and it might push you even further than what you wanted, it really is outside your budget that you had dedicated to that specific animal. In addition to the budget part of it, I think it is super, super important to establish a fund that you can buy your animals from. And when I say a fund, I don't mean like, we're gonna spend $10,000 this year buying snakes. I think that it is better to put money that you have already earned, whether that's from snake sales or from your income, into a separate account and you wait till that account grows to the point that you can afford the snake. Because if you start buying animals on credit, it can put you in a very, very dangerous position because it is so easy for some other emergency to come up in your life and then you aren't able to pay off that credit card and then you're getting hit with 20, maybe even 30% interest and it can crush any potential that you had on earning a return on that animal that you had invested. If you establish a fund, that kind of helps establish a timeline for you as well because you know that you're not allowed to buy animals unless you have the money in that fund for them. Now, beyond the fund of it, I think it's also a good idea to establish a timeline. So not only are you trying to save up the money to buy the animal yourself rather than trying to buy it on a credit card or something, I think that if you are establishing a timeline, you can know that if we need to wait for these females to be a year old before we buy a male, you are not tempted or you are less tempted to go out and buy the male right away because there's an animal that's available. Because if there's an animal available today, it is very likely that there will be a similar animal available six months from now or a year from now because as projects develop and mature, more animals are available, not less animals are available in them. And that's not a guarantee that that exact combination of genes will be available, but you'll probably, probably be able to find something similar within a year. So if you establish a timeline, and that is that before we buy, in this scenario, a clown het sunset, we need to have double het females, and those double het females have to be at least nine months old, so that way if we buy a clown het sunset, they'll all be ready at a roughly about the same time. That's gonna help you avoid looking for clown het sunsets before you're actually ready to buy them. Let's say you've done all of this stuff. You have your fund, you have your timeline, you've done all of your different things with your breeding strategy, and you find something that you really want. 
I think that it is really important to take that potential animal, take that potential opportunity to somebody that cares about you. Doesn't have to be a partner, but it could be a partner that you have. It could be another reptile breeder friend, somebody like that, but not somebody who's just going to enable you, but somebody who's going to look at it objectively and help you determine if that is a good purchase. And if they are also saying it's a good purchase, that's a checkbox, that's great. But if they say like, hey man, I know this is cool and it might help you out a little bit, but I think it would actually be way better if you saved an extra $2,000 and got this kind of animal. Maybe you might wanna take their opinion into consideration because most of the time, somebody who's not emotionally invested in the animals, in the projects that you're doing, they'll be able to make a better decision than somebody who just wants to feel like they are progressing to a, towards a project that they may feel like that they have been waiting around for for multiple years. Now the last thing that I think that anybody should do when they are deciding if they're gonna buy an animal and they're trying to determine if it is a good decision or a bad decision is to take a step back, take a breather, and once you've done all of these different things and you found an animal, wait. Just wait a day, wait two days, maybe even wait three days. And if at that point you don't have the idea of buyer's remorse, maybe then you should proceed with it. But if you wait a day and you're like, oh man, I'm not feeling that itch as strong as I was last night while scrolling through Morph Market, you might be able to take a step back because you know that that animal isn't exactly what you need and it's not really going to help you out more. So in my opinion, I think that buying animals, progressing your projects is super, super important in the reptile hobby. But if you are not careful, especially with new breeders when they're buying all of the different animals, it can very, very quickly turn into a reptile addiction. So we hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you next week.